Hey everybody, I just finished uh, listening to the Free Fly, Free Fall RSC podcast on shop ideas, and I figured, what the heck? A couple of people have put up some neat videos and some neat ideas. I figured I'd share a few out of the uh, the mess that I call a shop here, and maybe a couple of them will help somebody. Um, as you can obviously tell, I need to do some cleaning. Um, you can also tell, I'll give it a little shot up above. It's not the biggest space, so I use every bit of ceiling space that I can. You can tell I got quite a few hobbies and activities crammed in here. Also got some real heavy lens glare off some bright lights down there. Let me turn off one set. Got some big halogen uh, halogen work light that's actually mounted up to the ceiling up there. Uh, points down right onto my main working area, so I got plenty of light up there. Um, one of the things that I found most helpful is my wall of tools. Um, of course, this is more than just RC tools, plenty of tools for just about everything I'm working on. Um, I've managed to pick up a couple of cabinets at Ikea in their scratch and dent section for a couple of bucks each that were unfinished. And the wall cabinets are great for storing things. This one's got glue on the bottom, caulking in the middle, solvents and paints, etc. in there. But you can also make all kinds of hangers to keep all of the tools out. And what I find is real helpful is to keep all the tools visible. Uh, for me, that's a real key is to make sure that I know where things are at uh, by being able to see them. Um, it was mentioned on the podcast, it's great to have a, have a known spot where each tool is supposed to live so that you know where it goes back to. And it keeps your working area a lot cleaner. This is one of my uh, drill presses there. I've got all my uh, magnetic uh, jigs, thumb clamps, etc. there for magnet uh, building on the magnetic board. I've got my other drill press here. Uh, this is the one that I actually use for drilling things. Whereas the drill press that's got everything magnetic hooked on, it's a full-time sanding spindle. Um, all of this, there's actually a workbench down here below this. Um, but I found over time, whereas that workbench height down a little bit lower was uh, good for when I was building more of the house and the furniture here, um, for RC stuff, I wanted to be up a little bit higher. So I happen to have a big round uh, cardboard tube here um, that I was able to set my magnetic um, workbench onto here. This is for the balsa building work. Um, Let's see, looking a little bit more over here to the right, got a little baby uh, bandsaw in the back corner, scroll saw over there as well, handy things to have. Um, a couple more guitars and amplifiers, one of my other hobbies is building those. Uh, there is a sink buried in the back there that's definitely handy to have. Um, you see I've got everything from exactos out and visible. Um, generally the idea that I'm going with is keep all of my tools out and visible. There are, however, drawers of tools um, underneath this workbench. I've got some rolling drawers uh, where I've taken cabinetry um, and just put them on some casters. I've also got some of the larger tools, um, the planer and uh, chops on, things like that, that are on skids and live down underneath. Now, there was also a discussion about what do you do when you're working RC and you're working out of your... Uh, off your dining room table. Um, and actually when I started building RC, uh, the shop was in way worse shape than it is now. <laughs> and I actually started doing the RC work on the table in the kitchen or in the, the dining room. And my solution for keeping everything organized and being able to clear in and out is right over here. It's become part of my, uh, my outside workshop now as well. That is a rather large size vintage suitcase that I picked up for like 10 bucks, I think, at a second-hand store, and I ripped the liner out of this suitcase, and then using a good old Dollar Tree foam board, I built up on the inside some organizing capabilities. So I've got a little drawer over here on the side, and down in there is where I keep all my servos and uh, connecting rod type work down on that side over here got another drawer that I made out of a Dollar Tree foam. That side's got all the tapes and Velcros in it. 
Also get some stuff that just sits on top. Extra glues can hang out down in here and different paints. Balsa, sealer, things like that. Keep all my wheels together back here. Extra wheels. It's a scale. Um, and then it's great to be able to throw in lots of boxes of other things that you can keep organized, like all the servo bits. Or uh, not servo. Yeah, servo control rods, things like that. Stay in this one. They can tuck back in there. I've got one for all the various metal fasteners. Big on keeping those things organized. Um, plans, as you can see, get sort of tucked into the back of that. And when I was working out of the kitchen, I had everything that would everything would pack into this one suitcase. And at the end of the night, I could close the lid on the suitcase, pick it up, and go take it and stuff it in a closet. Um, it was hidden nice and out of the way. Um, at that point, I was using this green work mat over here. Uh, pull this one out and go to work on the table. Um, and then pack it up every night. This worked out really nicely. Um, now, of course, it's become sort of a, a permanent part of the RC workshop out here. Um, one of the other things I uh, like using is to get rice in these plastic containers. And I use these to keep all kinds of stuff together. You know, FPV cables in that one. This one's got all kinds of LED and lighting rigs in it. This one's multi-rotor parts, straps, anti-vibration stuff in there. That one's got cameras. Um, and everything's labeled on the front. I can check them off as I happen to use something if it's got more than one of them in there. Um, it just becomes an easy way to, to keep things a little bit organized. Um, I've also got a, a drawer system over here. I think I got that one from Hobby King. You know, drawer full of receivers, drawer full of ESCs, drawer full of motor mounting stuff down there. Um, I really like this uh, tool caddy here. Uh, I got this one from Lane's Planes uh, up at Flight Fest, and it's great to be able to keep all the, you know, the good quality RC, all the hex tools and all the, the stuff that you need. Um, keeping the, the RC glues up top here, different snips. Um, that works out very well to keep things organized. Um, so I think that's probably the only stuff that's worth anybody else thinking about replicating. Um, yeah, I do keep a lot of stuff that's just sort of jammed up into the ceiling. You know, I've got some restoration projects back there that I'll get to eventually. I've got a 440 bite back there that uh, is going to get an electric conversion. I've got a sop with pup, a foamy up there that needs a new motor put into it. I got it real cheap at an auction. Um, this I think I'm going to get to a little sooner rather than later. A um, little uh, electric glider here. Needs a bit of recovering to it. Um, oh, one other uh, fun thing. So, as you can guess, I don't often open the garage door here. Uh, when I need to open the garage door, I've got a few things to unhook from the ceiling. But in the meantime, I made my own little pegboard here that just hangs right on that garage door track and allows me to, again, keep lots of parts visible. Um on the podcast, I forget who it was, somebody was talking about they wanted to uh, keep all their heli parts up and visible. Um, that's very much the idea that I'm doing here of, of keeping a lot of my uh, my plane parts visible. Of you know, There's retracts, there's electrical components, there's uh, the, the metal gears or metal fasteners piece down there goes up there, and nylon fasteners, things like that. Um, plenty of props hanging out up there, extra Velcro straps. Um, just a, a handy way to keep all of that stuff up there. Um, all my razor blades. Uh, notice on the razor blades, there's a rubber band holding those pat boxes together. And I'll bet you can guess why. Let's just say I didn't do that at first. So anyway, that's, uh, that's how I'm sort of organized around here. Um, and notice lots of different storage solutions, because most all of them I've picked up on the side of the road. Um, or in somebody's scratch and dent, whether it's, you know, Lowe's uh, in a damaged, um, ready to go real cheap, or Ikea's scratch and dent section. Um, things like there's a kitchen uh, cabinet over there that was just sitting on the side of the road from a, a construction project. They just put it out to be thrown away, so I painted it up, and it's got my air compressor and uh, 
some of the decking equipment and stuff in there. So, um, yeah, basically just get, you know, get creative. Your shop space is definitely a place where you can get as creative as you want. Think vertical. Think about using every cubic inch that you can, and you'd be amazed how much you can cram in. Just try to keep it visible so you can lay hands on the tools and the parts that you need, and uh, and have fun with it and post ideas up. Always, uh, always lots of fun to to see what other people are up to in their workshops. Have a good time, and uh, thank you for the great podcast, guys. Really appreciate that one. A lot of good ideas.